Um, I'm Anisha Patel. I'm a researcher. I work at WMG's Energy Innovation Centre. And today I'm going to talk to you about the things that I do here. I'm an electrochemist. I study the movement of electrons. When electrons move, we get electricity. And that's what electrochemists do. They study the movement of these electrons and the chemical processes that cause these electrons to move. I'm going to tell you how that is going to help us fight climate change. It all starts with the story of these three men. They are the very first electrochemists. They are pioneers. They have changed our world. They discovered important things during their work that changed our lives. Their discoveries were based on two frogs' legs. Luigi Galvani took a pair of frogs' legs and he connected them to two pieces of metal and he found that he could make these legs move. What he had done is he had discovered the connection between life and electricity. But there was more to his discovery, he just hadn't quite figured it out. Luckily, there was this other guy called Alessandro Volta um, and he heard about what Luigi had done and he tried to recreate it. He didn't just recreate his experiment, though. He understood what was going on. He looked deep at what he was seeing. And he discovered that the key to making these frogs' legs move was these two pieces of metal. And that led to the discovery of the first electric battery. And then along, along came Michael Faraday. He heard about what Alessandro had done. And he managed to get hold of one of these batteries. And he used these batteries in many different ways. He discovered the first electric generator. He discovered the first electric motor. All these things have changed the world. They have led us into the electronic age. To give you an idea of how much of an impact they have had on our lives, these are examples of some of the things that we use. None of these things would be possible if there weren't for the inventions of these three men. But what has that got to do with fighting climate change? The Earth is getting hotter, and it's causing the weather to get more and more extreme. And this is because of the greenhouse gases. These gases trap heat inside the Earth and cause the Earth to get hotter. But the planet can't handle this kind of change. So we're getting weather that's quite crazy, it's really hot, it's really cold, it's dry, it's very rainy. One of the greenhouse gases that causes this is carbon dioxide. It is actually the major contributor to the greenhouse gases. If we want to address climate change, we need to lower our carbon emissions. Carbon dioxide is released when we burn fossil fuels like coal, gas and oil. So if we want to stop climate change, if we want to stop um, all these crazy things happening in our weather system, we need to reduce the carbon dioxide production. And that is why world leaders got together and they agreed that by 2050, we will limit the carbon dioxide um, production to, uh, down to 55% and they would limit the temperature increase by 1.5 degrees. In order to do that, we need to first look at the sources of carbon dioxide. So this is the data from the UK. This is all the sources of carbon dioxide in this, in this country. 33% is from the transport sector. This is what we mean by the transport sector. All the things that you find on the road, our cars, our buses, motorcycles, all the things in the air, our rail, all the things that travel on sea, these all contribute to the carbon dioxide emissions in the transport sector. So if we want to address the carbon dioxide emissions from here, we need to find a different source of energy for them. And that's what the big idea is. The big idea is to change their source of energy from fossil fuels to batteries. But before we can do that, we need to first look at the batteries that we have because they don't perform the way we need them to in order to be used for the applications. When I say perform, I mean they don't last as long, they're not as powerful. 
We need batteries that can allow us to travel long distances. We need batteries that can allow us to travel fast. We need batteries that don't take such a long time to recharge, so we don't have to wait a long time before we can get moving again. Um, and in order to do that, we need to understand what's happening inside. We need to understand what's causing the ageing. We need to understand what affects the performance of these batteries. So these are the batteries that I'm talking about. When we're talking about the batteries in our cars, I am simply talking about these batteries. You'll recognise these. This is a cylindrical cell, and this is a pouch cell. These are the type of batteries you'll find in like, your remote control. And these are the type of batteries you'll find in your smartphone, in your laptop, in your iPads, tablets. They are essentially the same. They're just put together differently. In each of these batteries, we have layers of anode, separator, and cathode. Exact same materials in both of these electrodes. They're just put together differently. In a cylindrical cell, these layers are wrapped like a jam ragu poly. And in this pouch cell, they're stacked in layers like a lasagna, but it's the exact same material, which means it's the exact same chemistry. Each of these layers is 200 microns thick. To give you an idea of that, if you grab a piece of your hair, a strand of your hair, that is about 200 microns. In order to address ageing and performance, we need to understand what's going on inside these batteries. So it's a diagram of each of our layers. We have our anode, our separator and our cathode. Our separator has an important function. It makes sure the anode and the cathode don't touch each other. Because when that happens, something bad happens. When we're charging and discharging our batteries, what we're doing is we're moving lithium ions, which are positively charged, to one side. When we discharge, they move back in the other direction. And as you can see, electrons move while we're doing that. But when, when these ions are moving back and forth, they interact with different materials inside our battery. And this is what happens when they interact. Lots of crazy things happen in lots of different places. And all these things affect performance and ageing. You don't need to have all of these things taking place in order for the performance or uh, life of your battery to be severely affected. You just need a few of these things. This one in particular is quite nasty. This is dendrites. Dendrites are branch-like structures. They grow. They're quite hard as well. They have the ability to pierce through the separator. And when you pierce through the separator, it can make contact to our cathode. As you, um, if you may recall earlier I said when the cathode and the anode make contact, something bad happens. It's called short-circuiting. We don't want that to happen. Does anybody here know what short-circuiting is? Do you want to see what it is? This is what happens when we're charging our batteries and all these processes that I showed in the earlier slide are taking place. This is not what you want to see in your batteries when it's in your car or when you're in your plane. In order to address some of these processes, we need to understand why they happen when they're happening. And then we can find a way around it. So that's what I do. There are many ways we can look at dendrite growth. The easiest way is simply to just look at it Look at what's happening when it's happening. But imagine looking inside one of these batteries. You can't, because it's encased, and that's for its own protection. We can't see inside them. And that's where researchers such as myself come in. I've developed a battery cell that allows me to look inside. We've created a window, so now we can see inside. But with our bare eyes, we can't see much because dendrites grow on the micron scale. They're about 10 microns. To put that into perspective, if a strand of your hair is 200 microns, chop it up 20 times, take a little piece of it. You want to try and look at that. It's very difficult with your eyes. You can't. 
That's why I use the battery with its window with a powerful microscope um, which amplifies what's going on inside using an electron beam. This allows me to see what's going on inside when it's happening and then we can understand why it happens when it happens and we can help develop materials, we can redesign batteries so they aren't susceptible to these failures. And this will help us electrify our cars. This will help us develop new materials that will lead to the complete electrification of the transport system. And that is how we will address climate change. If you go home, have any thoughts, share it with us. Thank you.